Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Seriously, it really helps. Anyway, welcome to my series of reviews of wines from Dome Bousquet. I've reviewed several of their wines over the past few years. If this is your first time seeing any of my reviews of their wines, please check out the first video of this series about the Sauvignon Blanc. I covered the background of the winery and the region in that video. All right, so we're just going to get into the stats of this wine. The 2020 Domaine Bousquet Virgin Organic Malbec, the suggested retail price is $13. It's from the Guatiari Valley, Tupangato, Uco Valley, Mendoza, Argentina. 100% Malbec it is a certified organic vineyard. It is USDA organic wine. I'll get into that in a second. No added sulfites, hand harvested, 1,200 meters, 3,900 feet elevation. The soil is gravel and sand. Now, I couldn't find a tech sheet for the 2020 on their site, so I used the 2019 tech sheet, and it should be pretty close. The ABV is 14.3%, the total acidity is 6.15 grams per liter, the pH is 3.6, and the RS is 1.54 grams per liter. All right, so what's this no added sulfites thing? In the U.S., a wine that is a USDA certified, sorry, a USDA organic wine can only have naturally occurring sulfites, hence no added sulfites on the label. Legally, the wine must have less than 10 parts per million of sulfites. The contained sulfites declaration means the wine has at least 10 parts per million. This used to be a U.S. only thing from uh, my research on organic farming and winemaking. Hence why people erroneously thought that European wines didn't have sulfites. They do, and the labels in the EU have the same standard. This has been in effect since 1988 in the United States and 2005 in the EU. So again, all wines with at least 10 parts per million of sulfites must have a sulfites declaration. These, this means that a wine with no added sulfites but naturally ending up with at least 10 parts per million still needs to have that declaration. Not sure about wines sold in other countries, but since the U.S. and the EU are the biggest markets, to export to, all wines have to adhere to those labeling laws. They may just have lab they, they just may have labels. Uh, sorry, the the local wines what they sell in their own countries may. Sorry, I'm trying to get, but they may just label the local wines the same too. That's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, basically, if you're exporting, if you're if your wine's not from the EU or from the US, and you're exporting to those countries, and you have at least ten parts per million. You have, you have to say contain sulfites. If your country does not have any type of labeling law concerning sulfites, then you don't have to do the contained sulfites if it's your own country as far as the label. All right, so essentially from what I've read on the website, the virgin line of wines would be, I guess, considered natural wines. So I talked about the, the sulfite thing, and I don't want to make such a big deal about it, and uh, the USDA organic wine. So the thing is with, with the organic stuff, and, and it doesn't always have it, and this one has the USDA organic logo on it. If it says that, then not only are the grapes organic, but the process of making the wine is organic. Another thing that I didn't really highlight on any of the other videos, and I'm just going to double check a couple things real quick on the video. Still got the white wines over here. Yeah, for the most part, the entire line, and I think this is the entire line of Domingue Bousquet, is vegan friendly. Now, hopefully you can see that. Hopefully you can zoom in on it. So... <clears throat> 
Let's talk about the vegan friendly thing. I have so many people just go, well, of course wine's vegan. Well, not necessarily. So in my series of Freestyle Fridays, we should be at the point where I've talked about how wine is made, how can wine conventionally is made. And it, this, a lot of this stuff extends to regardless of organic bio, et cetera. There's a process in the winemaking process that, or a step in the winemaking process where you're doing kind of a coarse filtration. It's called fining. And you have various materials that attract the large particles and they collect and they fall to the bottom of the tank. Some of these substances are derived from animals. In this case, what Bousquet is using is not animal derived. So that's the case with this wine. It's vegan friendly, like all their wines, because of their, not, you're not using animal derived fining products, but the USDA organic seal is ensuring that you have a certain minimum standard of everything being organic and not just, well, the grapes are organic. So if it says made with organic grapes, there was something in the winemaking process that wasn't considered organic enough or enough of that process wasn't organic, but they're still letting you know that the grapes are organic. Okay, so enough of that. Let's check out the wine. Love the screw caps. I luckily had just enough of these for all the wines I'm reviewing. I think I have eight, I have eight screw cap wines I'm doing this session of a few days. And I had eight standard size Corvin tops. All right. So by now you've seen a, a lot of my farming practices videos and I kind of do a longer explanation of organic and what that means on the label and everything. If you haven't seen that for some reason, go check it out. While I, I haven't actually recorded those episodes as of this, ep you know, re recording this episode, the scripts that I've written for all of these farming practices stuff so far is pretty killer. So I anticipate these ep those those episodes being some of the best content you're going to get anywhere on farming practices and the wine you make. I mean, I am the best wine show anywhere. And I try to live up to that standard. All right, enough of that. You know, I don't want to break my arm trying to pat myself on the back. But let's get into this. All right, this was 100%, right? 100%, just making sure on the grapes. Yes. 100%. Okay. So we've got, you know, a kind of a deep, a deep ruby. There is not as much electric pink on this as there was in the other Malbec, that Grand Malbec I did, but it's not just all ruby. There, there's kind of a, a pinkish purple edge to it. The staining is I would say a little bit more significant. We've got, I would call it medium staining. The other one was, I didn't really call it medium minus, but it seemed like it was a little bit lighter. Well, as far as, you know, we'll, we'll check out the tearing. Yeah, I would call it medium plus. What was the alcohol in this again? Wasn't the 14%? 14.3. So medium plus, about right. I can kind of, I can kind of smell the wine from doing all that. Let's just check it out. So medium plus intensity is definitely youthful. So the fruit is really ripe. And I, I keep going back to the, I keep going back to this. Yeah. No mention of, of Oak. And I mean, this makes sense. It's $13. I wouldn't expect it to have a ton of new French Oak, but I kind of feel there's, there's a little vanillin in it which I don't know. I think I'm just smelling off fruit and there's a ripeness of the fruit, not necessarily vanilla. And not, I really don't get any baking spices. If there is any oak treatment on this, which I really don't think there is, it's going to be in the form of oak staves and a stainless steel tank or oak chips, that type of thing. At $13, it's not that you can't have new oak or significant new oak. We well, can have new oak, but you won't have significant new oak. 
at $13 a bottle. I get kind of a fresh, uh, freshly hosed down concrete floor also. Let's just get into it. In some ways, I like this wine better than the other one. And this is like half the price. The, the fruit is really fresh. It's ripe. It's in your face. You've got raspberry and blackberry. A little bit of blueberry in there too. All really ripe in nature. I kind of get a little bit of the, of the fruit skin on all that. The um, little fresh earth. That vanillin I thought I was getting on the palate. I mean, on, on the nose, I really don't get in the palate. This is truly just a, a really fruit forward wine. It's unmistakably new world. Structure wise, tannin's up there, medium plus for sure. Um, the acidity seems a little elevated. I mean, I notice the acidity on this wine versus the other wine. Um, it's it's right in the middle point, so it's not it's not um, really dominating, but it was a little more noticeable. That definitely is dry. You know, um, it's less than two grams per liter of sugar, so you can really taste the dryness of the of the wine. But the fruit quality is such that you're at you're you're kind of balancing the dryness of the wine. Swirling it, I kind of get that kind of really vibrant, you know, electric type of of color to it. Somewhat of electric pink. So it's it's there, you know, the characteristics of Malbec. I do get a bit of this, and I hate this, I hate the description, and I have no better way of calling this aroma and flavor, but there is a bit of that bug spray type of thing. Thing is, I struggle with this with this description because I don't ever know what it really is and what I have to call it. Sometimes I call it like roasted coffee, but in this case, it's not a coffee flavor aroma. And a lot of it's because I know there's no oak in this. And the coffee and aroma, the coffee aroma and flavor sometimes comes from uh, oak barrels, but sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it's not coming from that. So there's a touch of this unusual, we'll call it, taste and aroma. Not my favorite, but I mean, it's in a lot of wines. I typically get that with Syrah and and uh, Cali Pinots, like the really rich, dense, fruity Cali Pinots. Not the Cali Pinots are, that are from like cool climates or from Oregon Pinots. I don't really ever get that. Syrah, I usually get it from New World, well, more United States Syrah, not necessarily uh, Australian Shiraz. It's here. It's not a dominant flavor. It's not a dominant aroma. It just kind of hit me kind of near the end. It's barely there. So it's not really affecting my enjoyment of the wine. Anyway, um, yeah, I think it's a well-made wine, especially at a really affordable price point. All right, so that's going to do it for today's show. I just want to thank my good friends at Creative Palette, Kate and Jane, for supplying these wines and all the other wines they supply for me and their continued support of the show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you are hitting that like button and subscribing and then tell your friends. Until next time, let's check out some uh, organic Malbec.